Hey, what is up guys? In today's video, we're gonna be doing the Fly Sky mod. Now you might say, what is this mod? Well, this mod will allow you to connect any receiver to your Fly Sky FS i6X and the i6. So this is gonna be pretty interesting. You're gonna be able to bind to FR Sky receivers. Uh, you're gonna be able to bind to the toys, you know, the Eoshin toys or the, whatever, the SEMA toys. And you're also gonna be able to bind to Spectrum and all these other uh, receivers that your heart would desire. So some of the things we're gonna need in this tutorial, now this is gonna be a two part tutorial. Uh, the second part of the mod is going to be with the finalizing the mod itself with a 3D printed design and also some kind of a trigger switch to turn on and off the multi-protocol module here. So some of the components we're gonna need are we're gonna need currently for this one, the part one, we're gonna need just three wires and the multi-protocol module. Now about the multi-protocol module here, Let's move these to the side. It's very, very important you get this one. And why is that? Well, I've gone through a couple of them and this one seems to work and this one is possibly one of the best qualities out there. So it's really recommended this one works because some of them also just has serial. And uh, just again, just get this one, save yourself a headache and some money. And I'll leave a link down below. So this is the one that I got to work beautifully. All right, so let's get started. Well, first things first, no, we're not, I'm not only gonna show you how to do it, I'm also gonna tell you why it works the way it does and how, how why was it so simple. These multi-protocol modules right here, takes take a PPM input. Now the PPM input is universal throughout all most of the, the transmitters out there. So when I found out there's a PPM out on the motherboard on the Flyscar in both of them, then I was like, okay, well, th theoretically it should work. But again, theoretically it should work if this is by, if the multi-protocol multi module was controlled by serial and PPM, or just PPM alone. Now, if you connect this to the FR Sky, uh, you can choose the protocol from within the software. However, here we have a little knob here that we're gonna be able to switch what protocol we're gonna be using. And the FR Sky XM Plus and the XSR and all those X4R are on the number five right there. So you have to set that up to five. So let's just get started. So this thing, the, the multi-protocol module just needs three wires. It needs five volt ground, and a PPM input for this one. So what we're gonna need to find on the FlySky transmitters here is obviously five volt ground and a PPM out, because the end is gonna go there. And uh, this is the FSI6X. I'm gonna show you the FSI6 in a bit, but this is the X, this is the upgraded version. So if we take a look in here, we have the battery in. This is the positive from the battery right there. It's gonna be a little circle pad like one of these, and that's where you would solder your positive. And then if you take a look here, there's these four pads also. The third one down is the PPM out, so this is where I got this one from. And then you can get ground from anywhere. I took it from this one here, which says ground three. That's why I got my wire right here. So that's all set and done. And the next thing you wanna do is to route them to the multi-protocol module. Now, and again, when I first started, what I was doing is I was just giving it power. I didn't insert the PPM actually. Actually, I kept the transmitter off. But since it's taking the power from the battery, it was booting up. However, it would not bind. And the reason for it not binding is it because it needs a real understandable PPM signal going through the board so it can do its other functions. So I didn't know that in the beginning until after a little bit of digging through this. So you have to enable the, you have to turn on your transmitter and also make sure you're, you know, you, you, know, you know how when you turn it on and your throttle is not all the way down, make sure you have the, all those switches and everything the correct position when booting so it goes through. So let's get started here. So which pin is which? So if we take a look here, the top, top pin is gonna be PPM input, which is right there. So now we have our PPM installed. And then if we go down one, two, which is the third pin down, that's gonna be, I believe, VCC. I'll double check it right now. And then the one before the bottom is going to be ground. So we have PPM, five volt and ground, beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the transmitter right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna give it power. So let me just grab my power here. I'm going to install this, which is the battery. Okay, so that's booting. And now we need to boot up the controller here. So I'm just gonna easily boot up the controller. There we go. You wanna make sure you properly boot it just like so, as you can tell now the light is fully just on. So I wanna move this a little bit and I'm gonna bring you, I've already bound my XM Plus, it's very simple. All you have to do to get this into bind mode is basically turn off the power, hold it, and then just keep holding it. 
now it's in bind mode all right now next step let's grab our receiver which we have an xm plus here i'm just going to give me giving it power through the ftdi adapter here and now we're out of bind mode so we should set this up first so i'm going to remove ground again here i already had it bound so let's just set this guy up into the xm plus into bind mode here all right as you can tell the, the green oh it's going to be difficult well, anyways, the green and the red LED are on, so it's in bind mode currently. All right. Put, the, put that there. And let's just zoom in a little. So be a little bit easier to watch. Now, sometimes it won't bind if it's so close, but just for the sake of this tutorial, let's hope it does. All right. So I'm going to hold the bind button, and I'm going to put in the power. Okay. There we go. It bound, as you can tell right there. So now it's binding. Now what we want to do is reboot this guy. And I believe we also, yeah, wait for that to finish. And then we're going to just boot it back up. And it should connect. We should get a green light. It's too close right now. So I'm just going to move this a little bit farther. When it's too close, the XM Plus doesn't bind. So we just have to, there we go. As you, oh, well, it's, it has to be off camera for some reason. As you can tell, it's the green light now that's on it's over there. So now we're just basically bound. And if I were to remove power from the multi protocol, which is I'm going to do right now, we should get a red light. So there we go. I removed it. Boom. Red. So can you see that? I'm going to go ahead and give power to the multi protocol module again without shorting it out. Okay. There we go. It's green now. Sorry about the focus. It's, these things are just super tiny. So as you can tell, it is bound and that's just beautiful. And uh, I did go ahead and test this and this thing actually does work, which is really nice. And I'm also working on the TBS Crossfire. So believe it or not, the TBS Crossfire also. So it's going to be pretty cool. Let me show you here. Where's the TBS Crossfire? So we're going to be, I'm going to be showing you how to do it for this also. But I think I'm going to leave that for part two with the complete mod uh, for the fly sky both of them they're gonna have a nice little 3d printed design thingy that's gonna go to the back and should make everything very nice and what I'm planning on doing also is instead of soldering now this is just a temporary solution for you guys because you guys were impatient from my last video so instead of just soldering to the main board here uh, we can utilize this thing now this thing only what's so useful from this port here is what we can get from it is the PPM output and ground. We're gonna need to get five volts, but we can do is solder a wire here with that one, just right there, and pipe it through the back here, as you can tell. And then we can pipe it through there. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna make a nice little PCB for this instead of this one, so that you could just replace the PCB. It'll take the same connector and everything. I'm still working on that part. Right now, I'm working on the 3D design, see how well it's gonna come out to be and, and how I'm gonna do it. And then uh, once I receive my new 3D printer, that's when I'll start printing it. However, we're also going to need to utilize a switch to turn on and off the module itself, which will be also in a later video. But I will have everything linked down below. If you wanted to be prepared, you can go ahead and pick those up. But meanwhile, if you wanted to use it, this is how you'd use it. So that was for the FSI6X. Now let's go ahead and check out just the normal uh, FSI6, which is the cheaper version, which is this one here. It says the Ishin i6, but this is the FSI6, not the X. The X was that one. All right, so here it's the same exact concept. Let's flip this guy over. Now, sorry, the, the wires are not color coded here, but um, it was just a prototyping phase. So if you take a look here, there's a ground pad. They're all like these circles here. You'll find one all the way on the left corner, which says ground. So that's going to be ground. After ground, we're going to need the uh, 5 volt for the mold multi protocol module, which is going to be BAT plus right there, which is that one over there. And then we're going to need the PPM out. Now, the way that these are labeled is that the bottom labeling is explaining what the circle is right there. So basically, this is RX. And then if we take a look up, this is PPM out. It's very difficult to read right now. But that's PPM out. PPM in would be the top one. And then that one is whatever. I can't read it from that far. But anyways, it's the second circle up between the RF IC here and this little connector. So it's the second little circle. And this is the PPM so this would be connected on the multi protocol module like so. So the PPM, which is that one, is going to be connected on the top one here. So as you can tell right there. And then next thing we have is I believe VCC, which is the third circle down there, which is that one. So VCC is going to be the battery, which is BAT plus. There we go, which is on the third one. 
Can you see that? That's awesome. And then the last one is ground, which is right below VCC. Try not to mix those up because if you mix those up, you're going to be going to buy another one. Uh, you're going to fry this thing. I don't know if it has a protection circuit, but I highly doubt it does. And that's really it. It's 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 just it's that easy. I mean, right now, if I just boot this thing up, it's going to be bound and it's going to be connected because I already bound it while it was on the other one. So we're going to be good to go there. So it's really nice in that perspective. So and, and that's really it currently for this right now. Now, there's a couple ideas that I have floating around, but these might be for later videos. Uh, this part two is coming where we do this setup with a 3D printed part and have everything set up very nicely with a switch that turns this on and off. Now, what I really want to do also is since the schematic of this is online, what I can do is I could pick up because it's open source project. I could pick up the schematic. I could redesign a board that would fit into both of these, the FS i6 and the FS i6X. And uh, you can place it somewhere, you know, just in here. And then we can because a lot of people are complaining about the antennas of these that it really doesn't get much range. So we can actually just take the onboard antennas here, uh, which we can tap directly into, which would be really good also. Uh, so it'll be very nice. So yeah, I think I think it's, it's a great idea. Now this is obviously using diversity here somewhat, I guess that's what it's doing here because you have you do have two antennas on the fly sky, but we can override one of these antennas and use it. As you can tell here, we have one facing like this and then we have another one facing right there. So there's one and there's another one. So we could probably take advantage of those and do some range testing. Now I will be doing range testing on my channel. So it's going to be upcoming very soon. I prepared myself also picked up the new FR Sky R9M. I actually didn't pick it up. I requested that one from Banggood because it's a bit expensive. But hopefully since I am really planning on doing um, range testing, they'll probably provide that for me. I'm really hoping for that because that's why I'm, I'm starting to get into wings because wings, the fixed wings is what's really going to be helping me test the long range stuff. I'm going to compare TBS Crossfire versus the FR Sky and see if we get pretty reliable results. So that's going to be pretty interesting. And um, for this tutorial, that is basically it. Uh, you guys wanted it as quick as possible. The part one, part two will be the complete execution of how to keep this um, how to, how to execute this correctly and have a nice little setup with the multi-protocol module. In a later video, I'll be showing you how to set up the TBS Crossfire also with this. Uh, it's the same concept. Um, it's going to be running off PPM and uh, yeah, it just basically works. So it's, it's really nice. And well, that's really it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, I'll see you possibly next week with back with this, uh, the second part of this. Currently, my 3D printer was just shipped. And I'm gonna, I'm been working on the 3D design yet. Well, actually, I've just been brainstorming of where to have it in the back here. Probably gonna be utilizing either these two screws here or something else of that nature. Because we can just take this off and route the wires through here, so we don't have to drill anything. But then maybe through the 3D printed compartment, I'll have the switch next to it here, like a little mount for the switch, which I'll leave a link down below the type of switch I'll be using. Uh, I think I have one next to me here, maybe. Yeah, there we go. One of these. One of these guys right here. So this will be turning on and off your uh, multi-protocol module or whatever module. So it's going to be pretty cool and pretty interesting. And well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you check out the links down below. And uh, if you guys do like this content, please consider joining my Patreon. It'll really support the channel. And a dollar or two a month can go an absolute long way. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.